I, I remember the first time they thought I had some musical talent. And I was playing on the floor. I was maybe three years old. And the radio was on. There was such a thing as radio, you know. And NBC had its theme, which it played. Uh, An orchestral theme? No, no. It was just sound. It was this. And I was at the other end of the room, and I don't remember what I was playing with on the floor. And I heard that, and I went to the piano, and I don't know how, and I played those exact notes. You never had a lesson? I'd never had a lesson, absolutely. I mean, I'd never had a lesson. I'd never really done anything. And anything I heard, I could play. You have perfect pitch. Yes, but. But I also read that you also could play anything in any key. It's I used to be able to, yes, I used to do that. It used to be sometimes very embarrassing. <laughs> I'd start in the wrong key when I was very young. Oh, no, 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 no. But it's, it's very sad. Uh, you know what happens when you get older. And I saw an interview with the great Russian pianist, Richter, yes. who complained of the same thing. If you have absolute pitch, perfect pitch, if you live long enough, you will lose it. And he said, just as I'm saying, that, that he lost it. And I lost it. He said, it's terrible to walk out for a concert and expect to hear this. And suddenly, to your ear when you sit down at the piano, even though you're playing those notes, it may sound like this. <laughs> so your perfect pitch has I shifted. Now it's, 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 it's gone not, down the tube. It's with, not, uh, wonder, yes. But you're able to transpose, which means that... Yes, no, that I out. always did. I never, I never thought about it. I never thought about the keys. So that, that came with training, or that just also, so came naturally? Well, everything I had, what little I have, came with training, of course. And how, how many lessons a week would you get at Curtis when you were there? One. A week? One That's week. all we ever got, was one lesson a week. But, but you learned much more from the other students. From the other students, then you learn from your teacher. The teachers were pretty crappy, quite honestly. They were not very good. They, were, they taught you theory, they taught you... Yes, of course. Oh, that was a great theory, Madame Longy Miquel. She was a, a great teacher. I would say she was about the most important teacher in the... Madame? Madame, well, her, her married name was Longy. And her name was... Her, no, her, that was her... Her maiden name. And there is the Longy School in Boston, which is a very well known music school, which was founded by her father. <coughs> and, uh, and she was a very important teacher. And she taught your training? She in taught Boston. all those subjects. She was absolutely a marvelous teacher, uh, uncompromising, uncompromising. And the other students that you, you said you learned a lot from the other students, who were they? Everyone. <laughs> Everybody else I was the low man on the totem pole at the time. And I really didn't know anything. I mean, they would talk about things like Opus 53. And I'd wonder what in heaven's name is Opus 53. At what age were you? Eight. Eight years old. Yes, yeah, seven, nine, ten, I don't know. And they were? Well, it wasn't so much how old they were. They were the, the youngest in our class was two years or three years older than I was. But they had been in a musical atmosphere. Many of them came from musical parents. I came from parents 
who loved music were concert goers, were opera goers. But they were not professional musicians in any way. You see?